Hi, welcome back to Movie Review Mom. Thank you so much for subscribing. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. I truly appreciate your support. And by the way, when you subscribe, click on that little bell and that will send you an email notification every time I upload a new video, which is several times a week, whenever new movies are coming out and hitting the big screen. Anyway, today the movie I'm reviewing is Harriet. This movie is surprisingly PG-13. And I say surprisingly because Hollywood has pumped out a lot of slave history movies in recent years that are hard rated R. And because this one is PG-13, it allows you to possibly bring your children to see it. If they're old enough and you think that the subject matter is appropriate, there is some shooting and killing and violence and a little bit of blood, and of course, a very delicate subject. So you know your children best, and of course, depending on their ages, you might want to share this movie with them. It'd be kind of cool if maybe in middle school or high school, they showed this movie, and then the classes could discuss out of the movie, what are all of the actually historically accurate pieces of information? What are the facts? What's what's kind of stretched a little bit by Hollywood and actually have a really good conversation about this uh, very horrible time in U.S. history and what it was like to be a slave and what it takes to be a leader that can change lives and change history like Harriet Tubman did. All right, this hour is two hours and five, two hours and five minutes long. And the movie review mom grade that I'm giving it is a B plus. I think I liked this movie a lot more than a lot of critics. And I'll tell you why. But first, in a quick nutshell, another hot debate that's going on is whether or not Harriet Tubman should be on the $20 bill. Do you think so? She was quite an extraordinary woman, and you can learn a lot about her inspiring life in this dramatic biopic, or is it biopic? I hear it both ways. Anyway, in this movie, as the modern day Moses. However, as I mentioned, not everything in the film is historically accurate, but you will learn some correct facts, such as she was the most successful conductor, they called it conductor, in the Underground Railroad. And during World War, or during the Civil War, she became a spy for the Union Army. She led 150 soldiers in the Combabee River Raid, rescuing over 750 slaves, one of the very few women in U.S. history to ever lead a military type of raid like that. She later remarried and continued to fight the good cause against what she called the monster called slavery. Her last words were, I go to prepare a place for you, which is a scripture out of John chapter 14, verse 2. And because of her tremendous love for God, you will get to watch a very faithful woman change lives and history. And for that, I give it very, very high marks. I really enjoyed it. It took me a little while to get into it. The first act is quite sluggish leading into act two. And I was like, oh, I don't know. But by act three, I was totally all in. And so give it some time. Some tips for parents are your kids might be bored in the beginning, just like I was saying, thinking that there's going to be a lot of action because the trailer makes it look like it's constant, nonstop action. And it's not. There's lots of talking and lots of hiding in trees <laughs> or hiding behind trees where not a whole lot of exciting action is happening. But if your kids can stick through it, they're going to learn a lot of U.S. history. So encourage them to keep watching. Other parental tips are that there is some profanity and quite a bit of use of the N word, if you know what I mean. You see slave owners abuse their slaves physically and emotionally. A woman gets beat, beaten to death and you see her actually getting beaten to death and the violence and the blood. And then other people are shot and they die too. Now, some themes in the movie that are more positive things are trusting in God, family, determination, courage, and absolutely freedom. So some things that I really liked about the movie are, first of all, I have to ask you, how do you feel about a British actress 
playing this great American heroine. Well, apparently there's been quite a big bit of backlash about it, but it doesn't bother me one bit. Cynthia Erivo does an outstanding job. And I thought she was just fantastic. And I don't care what nationality she is. Uh, it would have been odd if it was a white actress, but she was fantastic. And in fact, she sings and in the movie and she has actually even won a Grammy Award. Even more impressive is she has also won a Tony Award and an Emmy Award. And of course, some people are already tossing around Oscar. So we'll see what that buzz comes to if she gets nominated and if she even wins. There's some going to be some tough competition, but I do think she did a really great job. And by the way, she's going to be playing the legendary Aretha Franklin in an upcoming movie. And wow, did you check out her biceps? Just saying. If you enjoy this performance, check out Cicely Tyson's performance of Harriet Tubman also in a movie called A Woman Called Moses. Some people are saying, oh, it's about time we have a movie about Harriet Tubman. But we actually already did uh, with Cicely Tyson, who I thought was fantastic as well. I liked that the movie didn't portray Harriet as always being a strong black woman. It showed how frightened she was and how often she doubted her path and what God was doing with her life. What makes her different from the rest of us who feel that way sometimes is that she never gave up. And that's an extremely inspiring part of the story. She was driven. And not just for, you know, something she thought was nice, but something truly important. Freedom for everyone. Anyway, that part of the story is very gripping. And you see that tenacity in her eyes. And like I said, she really makes you feel like she is Harriet Tubman. I thought she was great. God and religion play a big role in the film as well as in Harriet's life. And so I appreciated that, especially because Hollywood tends to shy away from anything religious and almost go the opposite way to be politically correct. But, but religion and God was a huge part of what drove her. And so I'm glad that they included that and didn't just sort of brush that part aside of who she was and, and her mission, her God-inspired mission that she felt. Uh, there's a song called Stand Up, which I think is really lovely, and you'll enjoy that. Harriet Tubman felt the same way many others have felt throughout history. Be free or die. And so just my little two cents for those of us who live in countries where freedom is enjoyed to never take advantage or never take for granted that gift. Let us never forget the price that others have paid to live under such conditions of freedom. Leslie Odom Jr. and Janelle Monet are so elegant in their role. I was really inspired that Harriet didn't simply enjoy her newfound freedom in Philadelphia, but she felt compelled to return to danger to rescue her family and others so that they could be free too. I love that. That was super inspirational. I always appreciate it when slavery movies don't make all of the bad guys white. There are plenty of bad guys on in every color spectrum. And so I appreciated that they also brought that to light as well. No pun intended. Oh my gosh. Some things I didn't like are that the trailer made it look like the movie was going to have a lot more action. And, and like I mentioned, it's instead it's a little bit sluggish. So, um, just be patient. You'll get to where you feel like some adrenaline starts pumping in your veins. Joe Alwyn has been um, taking some hits lately because he isn't as menacing and evil as a slave owner as some other slave owners who were portrayed in other movies, such as Leonardo DiCaprio's over-the-top performance in Django Unchained definitely an R-rated movie. Director Cassie Lemons chooses to tell this true story with a linear approach, meaning, you know, in consecutive order, something that makes the story very easy to follow, yet possibly not as creative a decision as it could have been. I know with flashbacks and all of that, people often get confused. Um, Still, the storytelling was fine. Some people thought it was just boring and slow. But like I said, it starts to build. And by the end, you'll be cheering Harriet. 
Harriet Tubman actually did have dreams and visions. However, sometimes the moments that are shown are dangerously close to turning her into a superhero with powers. And a lot of people have complained about that. Of course, we don't know exactly how she experienced all of her visions and dreams, but we do know that she was able to see visions, not only of things that were going to come to pass, but also the big vision of a country where everyone was free and not a slave. There's some interesting lines in the movie where Harriet says, God was watching my, f God was watching, but my feet was my own. In other words, God helped her, gave her the visions and the direction, but she was the one that had to walk a hundred miles up to Philadelphia and more actually up into Canada. Ben Ross played by Clark Peter says, fear is your enemy. And Harriet later says, God don't mean for people to own people. Good point and very true. And, oh, and then I really liked this line. Marie Buchanan, played beautifully by Janelle Monet, says, you are so beyond any man I've ever met, so far beyond. What's a man to a woman touched by God? All right, I could go on and on because I wrote down more lines, but go to moviereviewmom.com and you can see the rest of my movie review as well as some of these interesting lines that I wrote that I thought were so inspiring. And as I mentioned, be sure and subscribe. And when this movie ends, you're going to see a suggestion for another video. Go ahead, click on it, watch it. That's another movie review that I made just for you. Thanks so much for your support. Bye for now.